Grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. Your only friend is YouTube Streets, Puerto Rock 77. Let's have a conversation of perception versus reality. There are things that you can perceive that might be true or that might be false, right? And it's just based on loose information or just something that's there, right? And then there's reality, right? Now, usually you look towards reality, facts, data, analyze stuff to see how close your perception was to a situation and does it align with reality? Now, here's where in our gaming community where things get straight or things go weird. Gamers, fanboys, whatever, they have a perception because it aligns with how they feel, right? In this case, let's talk about the Xbox tax. They feel the things that's going on with Xbox, that Xbox games don't get recognition, even though, remember, they bragged about 2021 being the best publisher? Yeah, they forgot about that, right? Their games don't get Game of the Year nominations, it's because there's this Xbox tax that just simply being branded by Xbox that levies challenges and difficulties to the brand from being recognized of how great it is to their perception. And this perception makes them feel good. Okay. Now you look at reality and there's information. There's obvious data. And then just looking at things with facts, you can realize that doesn't align with the reality. The problem is the reality and the information that's in reality, they're not using that to steer their perception or change their perception or make them realize that their perception is wrong. They will actually add more false equivalences, false perceptions to try to change reality. And that's why they're looking silly. A video, uh, the Red Dragon posted a video. Somebody else posted it. This is going around. Watch this reaction to the announcements. Now, of course, there's a little bit theatrical flair. I'm sure it's entertainment as well. Just like any podcast or something on YouTube, there's going to be a little bit of theatrical flair. But I want you to pay attention to who they're blaming. Now watch this. Nominees for Game of the Year at the Game Awards are Alan Wake 2, developed by okay. Remedy Entertainment, Baldur's Gate 3 from Larry Studios, okay. Marvel, Spider-Man, well, I Walker, told Zombiac you. Games, Resident Evil 4, oh, Marvel, fuck. Super Mario Brothers 1 Woo! from Nintendo, oh my God. and the Legend of Zelda. Fuck Tears you! Of Fuck you! And Fuck you! No! I, I told you! A highly competitive Eat Fuck sure, you! You the mic! You the mic! Fuck this guy! GameAwards.com. Fuck this guy! Yo, I do it! That wow. freaking smirk, wow. y'all! He should get so Will Smith. Stage, Somebody got to jump on that stage, man! And yes, you can expect lots of news and updates on what's ahead for games. In wow, what a fucking and get ready to celebrate bitch. 10 years of the Game Awards. Nobody we'll celebrating your bullshit. Thursday, December 7th. God, yo. Man, this is some clown ass shit. I told you. I told you to get ready for it. Wow, they gave fucking Starfield the RPG because they're not going to fucking give it to Yep, there How many is for... So, you see their reaction, right? You see, you know, the perception, right? And I'm not going to go, all right, you see on Twitter, people are using this. Oh, my God, they threatened him with violence. You guys are fanboys. Come on. They're, they're probably from New York or whatever. They're just talking shit, right? You know, she said she, somebody, Will Smith, should go on stage and slap him. They're just trash talking, right? The main thing is, though, they still going at him, though. 
They, they, they perceive him to be the problem. That's perception. He sucks. He's trash. Eat a D. Somebody should slap him. Jeff Keeley's fault. Perception. And she's like, I told you. Jeff Keeley. Perception. Now let's talk reality. Jeff Keeley's show is based on voters to which he said every single year, he says, he doesn't have a say. He's just a presenter a narrator, an orator. He just talks. He has nothing to do with any. He doesn't even get to pick the voters or whatever. There's a special election board that does that. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He stays away from the actual selection process, the voting process, nothing. He just gets the information, presents it. He handles the logistics to get the show running. He does all that other stuff. But there's a board which is comprised of Microsoft. They're part of it. That's right. They select the voting members to do this. Once the voting members are selected, and apparently this year was more than the previous year, about 150 voting members, right? They get to choose. Now, let's look at the reality of how the selection process is. I said this before on my podcast and other places. So if you heard me talk about this, I apologize if you're bored. But I got to make sure I level set anyone who watches this video. So you got 150 people. We're going to use... This category, the game of the year category. And the parameters of the game of the year category is six nominations. That's it. Only six games can be nominated. Right? Now, across all categories, whatever, usual stipulation is any game each voter member submits has to be released within a certain time window. Whatever the date is, that's the time frame. That's it. But it could be any game. So, 150 voters... They get their list saying, these are the categories. These are the slots. So let's focus on the game of the year specific category, six slots. Well, one voter will pick six games. Probably on the computer. Probably type it in. Maybe drop down by selects. I would imagine it'll be on a computer or on an app. Make it easier to tabulate. But one voter will pick six. Voter number two will pick their own personal six. Voter number three, four, five, six, all the way up to 150. 150 voters just pick their six. Out of all the games available. That means you have voters that picked Starfield as part of their six. You have voters that probably picked Sea of Stars, Dead Space, Jedi, Spider-Man, Diablo 4, Madden, whatever. Whatever six they wanted, as long as it was released within the time window, they could put it down. Six. Once all 150 voters submitted their votes and it's closed... The system, the computer, the application, the module, whatever, tabulates which games get mentioned the most often across all of them. The top six that gets mentioned the most, those are your six nominees. So Alan Wake, Super Mario Wonder, Legend of Zelda, Spider-Man, um, Resident Evil 5, um, what was the other game? You know, uh, I said what? Alan, where's Alan Wake? Or whatever. You know, five. Alan Wake, Superman Wonder, Spider-Man, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Resident Evil 4. And there was one more. What was the other silly-ass game? I forgot. For some reason, I'm having a brain fart, right? But those were the six games that got picked. Okay? Those were the six games. Oh, Boulder's Game. Duh. Right? Those were the six games that... What that means is those were the six games that got mentioned the most out of all the games. That doesn't mean other games didn't get mentioned. They just didn't get mentioned enough. Now, let's say if you added another slot. Instead of six nominations, there were seven. Then the game that got mentioned the seventh most time, that would be the slot. And rumor has it, the one that would take that slot was Diablo 4. Not even Starfield then. Starfield, for all we know, could be mentioned the tenth most out of all the games. You see what I'm saying? That's the reality. That's the reality. But the question is this. With this information, are these Xbox fans going to say, damn, this is my perception. Jeff Keighley, blah, 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 bias. Or the reality. 150 people selected by board members or, you know, this little board group. And part of that board group is Microsoft, who's part of it. They get to choose who's going to be the 150 voters. And each voter gets to select their personal six. And out of 150 people, it's kind of hard to make a claim 
that there's some organized system of bias or whatever, whatever towards Xbox. And this is the result. Right? Their final point. Oh, Starfield only got selected for RPG because they know it's not going to win. No, that's not how it works. The reason why Starfield got announced for RPG of the year, because again, for that category, and it was five slots, right? They were allowed to pick five specifically RPGs. Best RPGs. Well, one, there's not a lot of RPGs that come out. And if there is, a lot of no-name RPGs. Think of all the RPGs that came out this year. Diablo 4, Sea of Stars, Starfield, Baldur's Gate. Final Fantasy 16. Liza P. I know some people those are because they're RPG, but that you know. Um you see what I'm saying? You know? So it'll be easier to mention Starfield because there's not a lot of big blockbuster RPG, so. I guarantee a lot of people mention Starfield. A lot of people mention Liza P, and that's why it's on the list. But when you mention Game of the Year, and there was tons of Game of the Year quality level, and everybody was saying it, because look at all the other games that were competitive. Diablo 4, 90 plus Metacritic. Hogwarts was a surprise hit. Everybody loved it, right? That was another big one, you know? Jedi, another one. There, there was a ton of games that could easily be slipped in. So you don't see your stars. It's just it's just on and on, right? But the perception is overriding the reality. They're not trying to hear that, okay? Let's look at another perce uh, uh, perception. Let me show you something else, all right? I want to show you this other process. Look at this, right? Because this is the question. Let me hide that real quick. Let me hide that real quick. Let me let me set the stage real quick. Let me I don't know why. Let me. Let me do this real quick. Let me let me do an adjustment. Let me do this real quick, right? This perception of Xbox tax, where everybody hates it, blah blah blah, industries biased, whatever, whatever. Okay, okay. What about the people who don't really pay attention to the industry? The casuals, the majority of the gamers. Majority of gamers aren't in this console war stuff. They're not. It's a small group of people on the internet just talking trash. But you don't have like 100 million console warriors or come sci. The majority don't care. The majority don't even know this is happening. They're just not. There's lots of people playing games, enjoying games, and have no idea that there's people butthurt over the Game of the Year Awards. It's just not there. Okay? Why is that group not all about xbox right you know now i'll show you the point there's mass Piscatella. he's providing us more detailed analysis and he said in the the first 36 months in the market of each hardware right that means all right the data console launch all the way out until the 36th month that time window so xbox the og xbox or playstation whatever console but we we'll use since the image is about Xbox, OG Xbox from the day it launch, 36 months out. Xbox 360, day it launch, 36 months out. Xbox One, day it launch, 36 months out. And the Xbox Series console, day it launch, 36 months out. Why 36 months out? Because Xbox Series console has been out for 36 months. So now they're aligning that data all across the board. And based on the first 36 months, Xbox One, at this point in time, sold more than all the others. At this point in time, Xbox Series is the second most, Xbox 360 is the third most, and OG Xbox. So, that's the order of things, right? So, why, if, if Xbox has done so much better, if the brand is so amazing, if the games are so amazing and all this stuff, and it's only the media that's just biased and don't expect it, okay, fine. But why... Does the normal gamers, I mean, not the normal gamers, casual gamers, gamers that don't pay attention to this, how come they're not seeing the excitement of Xbox, right? Now, the perception, you could say, is, oh, it's because of marketing, and there's no word, and the, you know, that's, that's, that's the power of the media, 
They, they, they have a hold on everybody, and that's why nobody's much for Xbox. Okay. So let me ask you this. How are you a fan of Xbox then? How did you overcome all those challenges? What do you Xbox fans have that millions and millions of gamers don't have? Are you guys the special chosen ones that you're able to see through the fog when everybody else is blind? What, what powers and capability that you have to see past all the bullshit yet the other millions of gamers just don't see it? What makes you so special? Please tell me your perception. So, your perception, right? You have this theory of this collective theory of Xbox tax where everybody's against Xbox or Xbox completely held to a different standard across the board. You have TV shows or award shows that are bought and paid for in the pockets of Sony. Never mind that if that actually was to happen, you know somebody would leak it and blow the whole story apart just to shit on Jeff Keighley, right? And you have millions and millions of gamers that don't know what's going on because they're blind because of media, all that stuff. And you guys are the only ones that see it. That's your perception. Or you can go with reality and just simply say the Xbox brand over the last 10 years had just been average. And average doesn't, Make waves. Kind of makes sense. When you're average, you get average results. No Illuminati. No crazy stories. No crazy agendas. It's just a case of just doing average things. That's it, right? For example, when you look at PlayStation, same thing, you know, 36 months out, PlayStation 2, the first 36 months, sold more than the PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5, at this point, sold more than PS4. PS4 sold more than PlayStation, and PlayStation sold more than PS3. Now, this is the important part with um, PlayStation, right? If you look at it specifically. PlayStation, obviously amazing, sells. Then the PlayStation 2 is the juggernaut, absolute selling beast. But the last one in the first 36 months was the PlayStation 3. You notice it is dead last on the bottom. That was a bad time for Sony, you know, and PlayStation the first three years. The first three years is sold terrible. You can see right there. You see it for yourself. It's right there. First three months, bad sales. These sales right here, terrible. Right? So with PlayStation 4, they had to build that goodwill again. They had to start over. Make different decisions on how they build consoles. Has to be a developer-centric console. All this stuff, right? They really focus on their first-party storytelling. And it worked. Because as you can see, the PlayStation 4, in its first three months, not only did what it's supposed to do, which is sell better than the PlayStation 3, but it also sold better than the PlayStation 1, which was a good seller, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Get back on track. Now with the PlayStation 5... Boom. PlayStation 5 is selling better than the PlayStation 4. They're trajecting back up. You know, you got a P you had the PS1, then the PS2, then hit the PS3. And now you're bowing back with the PS4. And now the PS5, you're trending back up, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Right? So the reality. People see PlayStation great console. People want to buy great console. So if so many people are out there buying PlayStation. Keep in mind, PlayStation 5 had a handicap because of COVID. It was a two-year period. They weren't producing enough PS5s. Y'all know the shortages and the scalpers and all that crazy nonsense. Those were things the previous consoles didn't go through. Not so much the scalpers, but COVID, you know, supply line, logistics, not enough um, silicon to produce consoles. PS5 was the only one to experience that out of all the PlayStations, right? So it got held back for a good solid two years, right? And yet it still outdid the majority of the consoles themselves, right? Why? Because people see the PS5 as having a lot of great libraries, a lot of great games, and people are going after that. And because the console has a lot of great games, that usually translates into things like awards and Game of the Year nominations, all that stuff. See how all that, shit, all that stuff ties together? The, the, the whole awards and how PlayStation gets praised for its games 
you see the results from gamers and they're buying it. The, the, the two things align. The Xbox tax dudes think their games are great, but you don't get the sales and you don't get the recognition, but somehow this this thing still exists. Somehow the games are awesome. It's everybody else that's wrong. The entire rest of the world is wrong. Come on now. You guys are just fans of an average brand. That's it. The Xbox is average brand. It's average. Some things are good. Some things are not so good. You got Game Pass, so for a lot of people, it doesn't really matter. You're paying your 15 bucks a month anyway, so if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. You know, Jesus, take the wheel. That's it. There's nothing else to it, you know? Now, one last piece of data, and this was pretty interesting. This data is the complete lifetime sales in total of each brand as of October 2023. And as you can see, with the PlayStation platform, obviously PlayStation 2, and this is US hardware sales, right? Is the number one selling PlayStation of all time. PlayStation 4 is the number two selling PlayStation of all time. PlayStation 3 is the number three PlayStation selling all time. PlayStation, I mean PlayStation, and PlayStation 3 is the fourth. PlayStation 5 is last. Now, obviously it's last, because it's only been out for three years. It only has three years worth of sales compared to the total sales of PlayStation 1. And all its years has been out. PlayStation 2, 3, and 4. So obviously PlayStation 5 is going to be last until over the next couple of years it's going to catch up. I have no doubt it's at a minimum going to pass. It's going to pass PlayStation 4. It's going to outpace it. PlayStation 5 at a minimum will be the second best selling PlayStation. Minimum. It's going to blow past PlayStation 3, right? PlayStation 3 is currently at 80. It stopped at 85 million years ago. That's why PlayStation 5 is last. It doesn't have 85 million sales, right? So, and, well, this is U.S. sales. So, U.S. sales could be 30 million, 40 million, whatever. But PlayStation 5 is going to go blow past PlayStation 3. It's going to blow past PlayStation 1. And it's going to go past PlayStation 4. PlayStation 2, the juggernaut, that's where it's going to be interesting. And I think PlayStation 5 can do it. I think this will be the console to go past PlayStation 2. I firmly believe that. The way it's selling is remarkable at its current price point. And the reason why I say that, even though the charts before, the first 36 months of PlayStation 2 was out selling, you know, out was faster paced than PlayStation 5, it had price stops by that point. When you look three years into the PlayStation cycle, so the PlayStation 2 launched in 2000, so you're talking 2003, it launched at 300, it was probably 200 bucks by that point. PlayStation 5 is not 200 bucks. It's still going for $500. 400 and up. You know, when this console starts doing its price drops, whenever Sony decides to do that, were they selling a PlayStation 5 for 350? Assuming they do that. Now, if they don't do that, then they probably don't really care about it being the overall number one seller. They're trying to maximize profit. But... If they do the aggressive price drop that they did with the PlayStation 2, bro. But now, let's look at Xbox. Lifetime at this point. Number one selling console of all time is the Xbox 360. Then the Xbox One, then the OG Xbox. Now, if you've been around for the OG Xbox, like me, I have, right? And I show pictures, I have one, you know. It didn't sell good at all. It only sold lifetime total 25 million global. There wasn't really good sales, which was sad because it is an amazing console. That counts. That's an Xbox console. 360 is also Xbox console. That's Xbox in their prime. But sadly, Xbox, OG Xbox didn't sell well. PlayStation 2 was just too dominant that year. It is what it is. Even though the OG Xbox, for many of us, was considered the Dreamcast 2, the successor of Dreamcast. Amazing console, right? But of course, you know, it's the lowest selling, right? Obviously, the Xbox Series console is going to be the lowest selling out of all of them because the other consoles have been around the block 5, 6, 10, 15, 20. Hell, the OG Xbox has been around for 20 years. So, obviously, this is cumulative sales in total, right? But what's interesting is that the Xbox 360 was the best they ever got. And then when they hit the Xbox One, that was their down point. So, Xbox One is their down point. That's when they're trending now. See, they went from OG Xbox... Original Xbox to 360. They're trending upward. Xbox One is the point where they hit down. 
So that's where the down point is at. But the problem is Xbox Series console is further down. By the end of this gen, Xbox Series might only surpass OG Xbox. And that's it. Won't even be able to surpass Xbox One. That's the reality. But now this is where perception is primarily used with these Xbox fanboys. Because what they're going to do is they're saying it's not about consoles anymore. Like who talk who talks consoles? Even though most of these people are playing on consoles. But oh no, who talks consoles? It's all about phones and PC. But the reality is, if you consider Xbox a first party platform provider, that's because of the console. You're not a first party provider because you put games on PC. PC is an open platform. Anybody could put that. And sure, you could say, oh, it's Windows operating system. That doesn't mean nothing. Majority of PC gamers play on Steam. Majority of games, they use the storefront, the application Steam. That is the application that is used. And Microsoft does not get a dime from any Steam transaction unless it's Microsoft's own published games. So all, let's say Hogwarts, right? Um, name another game, Jedi. Think of third party that has nothing to do with Xbox, right? Jedi, Dead Space Remake, Hogwarts, right? Sea of Stars, all these other games. Microsoft don't see a cut of any of that when Steam, when those games are bought on Steam. Steam is the headliner. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the way games, most PC gamers consume their games. Microsoft just decided to put their games on the Steam store. Microsoft with xCloud saying, hey, you know, put it on handhelds. You didn't hear Phil Spencer say, you might as well consider Nintendo and Sony their customers too. That's not first party talk. First party talk is what Nintendo does. When you look at what they do with the handheld, first party is what you see PlayStation do, prioritizing their console and stuff like that. That's 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 really the defining item that separates third party and first party. Third party, you put your games everywhere. EA. You'll put it on phones. They'll put their games on cloud and stream. They'll do everything. Ubisoft even has UB Plus. Their own streaming stuff and a subscription service. They're not considered first party, even though they have those things, right? But the perception helps fight the reality. The reality of Xbox consoles selling poorly, people not really being attracted to the Xbox brand, that can be countered with the perception of console sales don't matter. We don't need to talk about that. So that way they can stay in their feels and make them feel good. Which is weird because it's a consumer product. It's not your kid. It's not your family member. Like, I don't, you like, did you propose to Xbox? Like, I don't understand. It's just a consumer product. If you like a product that's average, then there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't understand why you're all fooling yourselves, making the brand bigger than what it is. It's, it's not, right? And don't confuse Microsoft having a lot of money with the Xbox brand being big. Two separate, totally different conversations. Microsoft is a big brand because of information technology, infrastructure, you know, operating systems, Azure, Windows Server, you know, productivity software, contracts with the government to supply teams and Microsoft Office and PowerPoint, contracts with schools, all that stuff. That's where Microsoft is known for. They're known for that. That's Microsoft. They're not, they're not, Microsoft is not known really for Xbox. Xbox is that small little entity that while Microsoft do find value trying to make money in the gaming space because gaming is a huge industry, right? It generates more revenue than movies, music, and American sports combined. So they do see value making money. But let's not pretend that the Xbox brand is this global phenomenon. It really isn't. Not at this point. You see not that many people are messing with it. It's so bad that even at this point, and then we call admit this, while well, at least the people live in reality, even Game Pass still has to be explained over six years later. Disney Plus came out two years after Game Pass. Disney Plus came out two years after Game Pass. It launched in 2019. You don't need to explain what Disney Plus is to people. It's self-explanatory. You get to watch all Disney content for whatever bucks a month you don't have to explain hbo max you don't have to explain paramount plus you don't have to explain spotify these things are self-explanatory pretty much self-aware people pretty much get it but for whatever reason 
You got to explain and sell Game Pass. There always have to be a selling point for Game Pass. People like Game Pass, whatever. What the hell is that? It's it's just it's just that people are just not interested. So maybe if you could just live in reality and just say, you know what? Things are not going to change until Microsoft stops making average games. And average games could be fun. Average games can be fun. People can enjoy average games. In fact, there's a lot of average games. You look, just go look in any stores from Steam, Xbox Game Stores, PlayStation Network Game Stores, even Nintendo. There's thousands of games that people don't talk about, whatever. Bunch of average, you know, shovelware people sometimes call that, whatever. But you pick any one of them, you can have fun with that. But that's Xbox brand in general, across the board, including their own first party. It's you just play it. Yeah, I have fun. It's pretty cool. But you're not. But it's not something you go out and convince people to buy a whole console for. If you have it, play it. If you don't, you're probably not missing much. That's just how it is. That's just the reality. Until you guys live in reality and demand that Microsoft steps up and stop making these stupid mistakes, stop treating games as average. Really step up, create bangers, actually create bangers, put in the effort to improve your narrative storytelling, the gameplay, all this stuff that makes people be like, you know what? Hell yeah. Stop diminishing your games to just average. Stop diminishing your games to where it's just, well, it's a new game on Game Pass. Quality over quantity. But that's what you guys got to do. You guys got to stop living in the perception and accept reality and based on reality demand better then if you really want your brand to be number one or you really want your brand to compete you want that brand to be recognized that's how microsoft they got to step up and create the quality products you guys trying to go at the industry and go at millions and millions of gamers that ain't gonna do a goddamn thing y'all could talk shit to me all you want it's not gonna change the millions and millions of rock fans now i'm just playing trying to get my Dwayne rock johnson on. no no seriousness it's it's not gonna change it's nothing only microsoft can try to change their perception so that way they can live in a reality of greatness and i have been saying what their weakness is but y'all don't want to listen Nobody wants to listen. So whatever. And it isn't buy more developers and all that stuff. Because they could buy all the developers in the world. It's not going to change. Because the number one problem that Phil Spencer and Microsoft have not fixed to this day is their publishing department. They don't have a publishing department. Microsoft as a publisher sucks at knowing what a banging game is. That's the key. You need those publishers, those whoever works in that department, to be able to identify simple things. Let's start with simple things. Something as simple as, yeah, Redfo looks like trash. We're going to delay it or we're just going to scrap the project altogether. Not good. Yeah, we're not going to show Halo Infinite like this in our showcase. It doesn't look good. We're going to let it cook in the oven. You know, and we're definitely not going to launch it half-assed. You know, things like that. Simple things. You look at games, truly be like, now nah, we expect better. You need to do better. Starfield, you, you really need to get this game at 60 FPS performance. Figure it out. Because we're not launching it like that. Simple things. Really take the games to a whole new level where people can look at it. The publisher can look at it and be like, Mm-mm, this ain't it. This, this doesn't say quality to me. Go back. Cook it. Let it cook longer. Let's go. But no, they're pushing out quantity, not quality, right? Quality in terms of getting recognized as a big wig. Now, you can enjoy the game. Listen, if you guys enjoy Xbox, I'm not saying don't enjoy Xbox or anything. I don't think anybody is. I know you have Fanboys and Wars, but at the end of the day, if you love Xbox the way it is, that's fine. Just don't pretend it's something that is not. Stop, stop categorizing xbox or stop making xbox be something it's not you're trying to take a random dude and you're trying to claim that this guy is going to be the heavyweight champion of the world and the dude never boxed in his life 
Like, stop that. You're going to get the guy killed. You're just an average Joe. Just say, hey, Xbox average Joe, so it's probably never going to win these awards. It's not going to consistently be an MPD. Hell, a lot of people probably not even going to buy it. But if you do buy it and you got Game Pass, you know, you got a lot of access games and you'll just have a good time. And that's really it. Terrible console for console wars, but... Save a little money in your pocket and just have, and, and as long as you're not expecting the best entertainment ever, you'll be fine. And that's it. That's the reality of Xbox. And y'all better accept that. That's the reality. Anything more than that, you, you stick with this perception, is you guys are going to look like the fools. Because you're not changing the majority's mind. The majority's not being fooled. The majority's not going to feel sorry for you. The majority's not going to be like, oh man, I feel sorry for these Xbox guys. Yeah, I think, I think. I think we're too hard on them. Fine, Xbox is good. I'm going to go buy an Xbox. Xbox is bad. Ain't nobody doing that shit. It's a goddamn console. It's a consumer product. Ain't nobody having no feelings over that. Ain't nobody going to feel sorry for you. The only feelings you're creating is laughter and mockery. You're just providing entertainment for us to talk shit. That's it. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for you. You're just in your own little group therapy sessions. Just... Doing this weird shit. But anyway, hey, listen, got a question for you guys. What's your perception of Xbox and what's your reality of Xbox? What's your perception of PlayStation and what's your reality of PlayStation? And what's your perception of Nintendo and what's your reality of Nintendo? I'm really interested to do that. So write in the comment section. Give me your stuff. If you don't want to talk about O3 and you only stick to one platform, that's fine. If you could talk about three, talk about three. If it's just one, it's just one, two, whatever. Do what you want on this channel. But while you're doing what you want on this channel, would you mind hitting the like button and subscribe? 60 Friends No Like every Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Come rock out so we could talk about it. This is your only friend in these YouTube streets, Portal Rock 77. And I am out of here. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.